Hello, Jeff Zwerink here, Senior Research Scholar at Reasons to Believe. There's been a lot of press lately about how NASA has found evidence of a parallel universe, and it kind of all stems from an article that uh, seems to have NASA connections with new scientists, that they were claiming that, and it's paywalled. Just kind of want to discuss what the discovery is, what are some of the, what's the actual science behind it, and how likely is it that we've actually found a parallel universe? And to start with, let's just go look at what the science itself is. Uh, there are a number of instruments in operation down at the South Pole, one of which is called Ice Cube, which is looking for neutrinos uh, in the Antarctic ice. And there's uh, just the, the way the Antarctic ice is set up, it's particularly suited for being able to detect neutrinos as they travel through underground. They create particles that emit showers of light and they're uh, arrays of uh, photo sensors that are down in the ice, and it's really kind of a cool experiment. Uh, there's another one called ANITA, which is actually a radio experiment. It's hover, it's floating up above the atmosphere, which as these uh, particles come through the, the ground and through the ice and through the atmosphere, they emit radio waves, and uh, the, the, the type of radio waves they detect can tell you what sort of particles they're emitting. And so the center of this discussion is uh, some events that are found by Anita and some of the science that Ice Cube has told us. And so uh, before we go too further, I want to just kind of reference the two articles uh, because there are actually two events that are found by Anita that are the center of all of these articles. And if you go back and look at the Physical Review Letters, version 121, published on the 18th of October back in 2018, uh, they have, it has a title of this, Observation of an Unusual Upgoing Cosmic Ray-like Event in the Third Flight of Anita. And they describe what this event is, uh, what could likely produce it, and they say it may be an upward propagating tau lepton uh, produced by a new, uh, tau neutrino interaction. And so the idea is you've got these tau neutrinos going through the center of the Earth, they come up, they interact in the top part of the ice, produce a tau, or a, a tau lepton that then produces the uh, signature seen by Anita. The challenge of this is that these sorts of events are difficult to explain within the context of the standard model of particle physics. And so the abstract for this article actually ends with uh, this sentence. If these are generated by tau lepton decay, then either the charged current uh, neutrino cross-section is suppressed at these energies, or the events arise at moments when the peak flux of a transient neutrino source was much larger than expected. So they recognize the difficulty of explaining this event. Uh, it has a, a background estimate of about 10 to the minus 2 events, so it's a, it's a very rare event or an unusual event. And they wrestle with uh, how do we explain this event in the context of the standard model. Uh, uh, this actually uh, is connected with uh, uh, a similar uh, article in, again, Physical Review Letters, uh, version one, or volume 117 from uh, 8 August 2016, where they detected four different cosmic ray-like events, two of which were unusual air showers, one of them was very horizontal, and a third one was like this tau lepton decay uh, with a very steep incident, angle of incidence. And so this, these cosmic ray-like events are the scientific measurements behind all of this discussion of whether NASA has found evidence for a parallel universe. So, uh, you know, if you want to investigate more of what the actual science is behind that, go look there. Now, the detection of these events really has, there, there's nothing scientifically controversial about these. The, the events are clear in the data. There are, uh, there's a lot of understanding about what type of events or what the signatures of these are, or, or rather, the way I would state that maybe a little more clearly is, given the way these events look in the detectors, what types of particles could produce these, and it really does look like a, a tau lepton type particle. And, and why that's intriguing is because um, we have neutrinos just filling the universe. I mean, they're, they're out there. And the neutrinos, uh, for a while, they thought they might be the dark matter because one aspect of neutrinos is that they interact very weakly with any sort of matter. In fact, most neutrinos will just go all the way through the Earth and never be impacted by it. Um, we know now that there is some interact in which to, or interaction with the Earth and mass, and so that tells us they have some small amount of mass themselves. Um, but, and there are three types of neutrinos. There are uh, electron neutrinos, muon neutrinos, and tauon neutrinos. 
And uh, what's interesting about this is not so much that neutrinos flow through the Earth, it's that in order to get a tau neutrino to flow all the way through the Earth, produce a tau-like event that would, that would give the signature that Anita saw, um, it should, those sorts of events should have been seen by Ice Cube and other neutrino detectors, and they haven't. And so given the constraints of Ice Cube and other detectors and what Anita sees, it's very difficult to explain this kind of event. And so that's really where the science stands firm at this point. Now, in the context of that, uh, people have put out ideas of what these could be. Um, you know, there's articles in uh, the, the, the Astrophysical Archive that are saying, here are ways to explain this. And, and there's an, actually an excitement about this kind of discovery for most scientists because what it points to is physics beyond the standard model. Now, the standard model of particle physics is this thing that has been, it, it's, it's been around for 40, 50 years. It is incredibly proficient at explaining the vast majority of interactions we see today. How electrons and protons and neutrons and gluons and all of these things, uh, the different quarks that exist, the different neutrinos that exist, the different fermions that exist, the bosons that bind them all together. It explains all of those in this very coherent, uh, nice picture. The problem is we know that it can't be the final explanation. And so scientists are looking for beyond standard model, standard model particle physics to explain, <clears throat> for instance, why do we have uh, fermions and bosons? Uh, or, or, or do they mix together? Well, nothing in the standard model allows them to, but maybe there's some mechanism in the early universe which is beyond the standard model that allows them to interact. So scientists expect that there's something beyond the standard, mar standard model of particle physics that will allow us to understand the universe even better. Why this is exciting is this may be a signature that allows us to know what that beyond the standard model physics is. Now, there are lots of different explanations out there. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not even going to really articulate some of them because they're rather technical and I could point you to articles. Uh, in fact, maybe in, in, in the link where we post this on YouTube or wherever it gets posted, we'll put some, the links to some of those articles. But you can just do that. Uh, you can actually go look for those yourself on the web. Just type in uh, Anita Anomalous Events and you're going to get lots of links to what the events were and what some of the explanations for them might have been. The point I want to bring up in all of this is not that there's any question about the physics of detecting these, or even that there's anything remarkable about the fact that people are looking beyond the standard model, standard model of particle physics to try and explain them. The question is, does the idea of a parallel universe provide a good explanation, or where do we put that in the line of explanations? Uh, you know, I'm not sure what NASA exactly said. Uh, I know that people have put uh, the idea out there that perhaps if there's this parallel universe where time run backwards, that could explain this sort of event. Uh, the, the, the challenge or the reason why that's a low probability event is that there's lots of other more mundane explanations rather than positing the existence of this vast multiverse out there that we really have no way of measuring. So, question I have is, how do we deal with all of this? Um, you know, it's, it's a challenging thing. There's a, there's a lot of interesting speculation out there. Um, th this is the way I think about it. There's this event, there's, there's this science out there, measurements that we, that are very well-founded, very legitimate, uh, that are challenging, uh, that we, that we, that, that don't fit our models to this point. That says, all right, we need to push beyond our models and figure out how to incorporate this new data. Now, even in that, there's, there's kind of two options, or two things have generally played out. Sometimes more data will resolve that and say, you know what we thought was a discrepancy turns out to be something that we just didn't account for. And it's entirely possible that as we observe more and more of these events, that we'll find, oh, there's a more mundane explanation that we hadn't accounted for could be there's a problem in the detector that gives us a signal we weren't expecting. That's very unlikely here, but that has happened in the past. There's times where you just get a single or maybe even a couple of events and you just never do get an explanation. Uh, one, one, uh, one type of event or one scenario or one instance where that played out was there was a, an experiment which seemed to have detected a magnetic monopole back in the, in the 70s and 80s. 
Um, we never have really gotten an explanation for why that signature came there, but we've done multiple uh, experiments later to find magnetic monopoles that would have been far more sensitive and we never have found them. So we've got this measurement that we don't really have an explanation for, but we know that it isn't pointing to magnetic monopoles. And so it may be that as we uh, go along, we find that there are only these maybe handful of events that are very difficult to explain that uh, we may never get an adequate explanation, but we just know they're not really that insightful in pushing the field of physics forward. More likely what's going to happen is that we find that, okay, there are these events out there, and they're either they're going to push us towards physics beyond the standard model. And that's really what this one is looking like. So in that scenario, it's not the, uh, we just find more data and find it's not really, it's, it's an unexpected effect, but something more ordinary. It's not the event that we may never explain, but it isn't really useful for advancing physics. It really does look like it's gonna be beyond the standard model particle physics. And so what do we do with that? Well, what we have to recognize is that once you get beyond the standard model, the, the number of possibilities of doing things beyond the standard model that explain what's there might well be limitless. Uh, I mean, I could propose, given sufficient knowledge in an area, I could propose many different ways of doing this. The question is, how do we now bring experimental data to those to narrow in or constrain or validate which ones are out there? And there's a good way, to, a good approach to do that is you ask the ones, which are the ones that are the least bizarre? Ones where it's just kind of a, a small increment or a little bit of step where it's like, okay, this is not what we expected, but it might be something more, uh, you know, just this one extra thing. When we now evaluate the parallel universe model of this, if you look at all the simple ones and then even the more complex and even the more complex, this is way down the road. So if there are you know, a hundred more mundane explanations. The parallel universe one is maybe item a thousand or maybe even 10,000 or maybe even a million out there. So rather than jump straight to that and say, oh, we've got evidence of a parallel universe, let's realize that it might be that, but there's a whole lot of steps we need to get to before that is the best explanation. In fact, the fellow who's leading the project that discovered these uh, particles or these weird events described it this way. It says, in this case, one or more journalists have evidently moved ahead with an article which was not verified, and for reasons which are not clear, have ascribed research and papers to us which we never wrote. Theories, and theories such as those involving parallel universes, which neither we nor our collaborators hypothesized about or discussed in any publication before these results were attributed to our experiment. This is one of the reasons that scientific advances proceed by a more measured process through peer review and verification by other investigators. So even the people behind this discovery are saying, hey, let's be very careful here. Let's be more measured. There are good routes forward which are gonna help us advance science, understand our universe better, and explore this incredible creation in which we have. Let's not go off into this wildly speculative ones. Hopefully you found this more helpful, uh, a way of, dealing with these bizarre, extravagant, out of these world claims that hopefully next time they come up, you'll be able to say, okay, let's go back and ask, what's the actual science behind this? What, is the, what are the scientists saying seem to be the best route forward? And how do these bizarre or outlandish claims fit within that? And that I have found that by applying that process that helps me understand where to focus my scientific effort, where to focus my apologetic effort, and where I can rest and say, yes, this is the data that really does point to how the universe works. And as a Christian, I found that as I've done that, I found that this universe really does point to God. There's a God out there who created this universe, who loves us, cares for us, and wants us to know him. And he's revealed that most clearly through the Bible, but he's also revealed that through this creation that he's given us to study and the scientific process that his creation has allowed to happen. So I hope you find that encouraging and helpful. Come back, check back later. Let's see what new, new discoveries come up and let's just continue to explore this fascinating universe and see what it has to tell us.